Hello, I'm back with uh, part two of my phased pseudo-sibling method demonstration. Um, if you have not watched part one, this video is probably not going to mean very much to you. So I And it's uh, labeled as episode 11 in my uh, overall genetic uh, uh, video blog. So you want to go back and watch that first before you watch this, otherwise this isn't going to make much sense. Um, and it was a long video, an hour, so um, I'm not going to really recap it since you really have to watch the whole thing to see where we left off here. Um, but however, I will, in, since there was a little lapse of time since they put this one out from the, from the first one, I will just quickly review where we left off, and we left off at step two, uh, where we had inserted do not touch group in our visual phasing maps. And actually, I'd only created one map uh, in the video, and we got to make nine for each of the uh, pseudo siblings. I already did uh, six of those or seven of those off the uh, off the camera, but uh, I'm going to show you just quickly how to make a couple more, just uh, to show you some features in DNA Painter that you might need to know how to do to make your life easier in this process. Um, then we're going to do step three. Uh, actually, the donor in Australia did most of step three, the visual phasing. Um, so we're just going to transfer it over into the format that works for this process. Uh, this this method is geared at people that have already done their visual phasing, and uh, there are groups, fa entire Facebook groups, dedicated to methods of how to uh, to uh, do visual phasing, phasing uh, especially for the, the multiple sibling scenario. Uh, although I will go over some of the basics on how to do it. Uh, a lot of it's already been done by the donor, most of it. Uh, then we'll go to step four. And we'll extract the segments, and step five, we'll combine them together and create both parent and grandparent kits. So I also wanted to show you that I created a Trello board for this uh, demonstration. And that's, if you're not familiar with Trello, you just go to Trello.com. And uh, uh, you can actually access this board probably the easiest uh, through the uh, Borderland Genetics uh, Facebook users group. I put a link to it in the units in the section. And it's... Uh, uh, in the complex workflow units I, unit, I think. Uh, if you should be able to easily find it, though, from the Facebook group. And uh, the purpose of this is really to gather all the material and try to make it a little bit more of a uh, interactive process than just watching a video. Um, the videos are part, you know, right here in the video demonstration. Um, and I'm still updating this, and I'll be updating it after I make the video because I'm going to put up some screenshots and some tips and things like that. Um, I listed uh, two prerequisite background materials, and those are uh, the videos I made on phasing and visual phasing. I think they're important if you want to understand what you're doing with the tools. Um, although, in theory, you could just take the script and run it, change the names, and run it on your family without knowing, uh, but that's not going to make your life easy if you try to do things like visual phasing and, uh, and actually uh, making really high-quality reconstruction. So I highly recommend learning about the, the science uh, in addition to just using the tools because you'll be better able to uh, apply apply that science. Uh, so uh, uh, things I put in here are like uh, recommended GED match settings, because I saw there were some people that asked me some questions uh, about, you know, what settings do you use? Because I kind of went through that kind of quickly. And you just click on it, and you can uh, click on the picture. Uh-huh. There we go. And, you know, if you want to... Uh, if you want to uh, look at it in a new tab, I think is what makes it so you can see the whole thing, the bottom, everything. And those are the settings I choose for the uh, the first step, which was binding uh, for the extract segments to, to remove the NIR. I chose five centimorgans, and I killed the hard breaks. And I chose build 37 just because I made a decision, conscious decision to use build 37 going forward. Um, you don't have to do that. Um, but I just want to show you that these screenshots are there. Uh, the second one under the Jed match is for the uh, three centimorgan uh, uh, that we use to create the do not touch segments. And I put in the image gallery three pictures of uh, DNA painter results for sibling one and sibling two, uh, sibling one and sibling three, and sibling two and sibling three, uh, just so you can see. Uh, what they look like when they're if it's done properly, you know there there should be significant uh, FIR segments that are in the middle of uh, the HIR segments. Uh, those are the do not touches will be in the middle of what you're going to be working on, and we're just going to work right around them. And I put some notes down there just to make the process clear because somebody asked me who are you comparing? 
uh, when, when I use those jet match tools, I'm comparing the original kits and I, I, to define those boundary positions. Uh, so I wasn't comparing the uh, the pseudo siblings. I had, in fact, I hadn't even uploaded them yet. I, I, I had sent the, the script over uh, to the donor and she up, uploaded them later. Also, you, some of you have made, noticed that there was a typo in the script. Uh, I fixed that and I've also posted it up here. I posted the script from part one of the demonstration and I'll post the script from this demonstration as well, this half of it. Uh, and I'll explain why you, you want to use one first and then you could use the second one. Uh, or a combination of the two later. And uh, just note that, like for each of these, and I'm gonna, this is getting into what I'm going to do next, uh, so let's take a look at sibling two and sibling three. Um, this is what it looks like. And I don't have to expand, but just to give you a closer look, uh, it looks good. There's some breaks in there that I'm not sure I understand that I, I that may have something to do with the, uh, the new Jed match, because I didn't really see much of that in projects I've done like this before in the original Jed match. And I know I put to eliminate the hard breaks, so I'm not really sure why we're seeing that. But overall, and it looks good. This looks like exactly what I would expect it to look like, um, with the exception of some unexplainable breaks. So we'll, we'll explore that when we get into the actual visual phasing and when I try to transfer her visual phasing map onto the, um, the data that I got uh, from this process. But the important thing I put here is that SIB2 and SIB3 DNA painter profile that we created is going to also be used for SIB2 X SIB3 and SIB3 X SIB2. You can put them all in one profile if you really needed to uh, save, but I created nine because it's easier to see what you're doing. Um, uh, so I've created actually nine DNA painter profiles, uh, although in theory you could get away with just doing three if you were really short for profiles and approaching your limit or whatever. Just to keep in mind, and let's 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 start that process. Oh, and just on the right, I put some tips and suggestions. Don't forget to check the box uh, to remove breaks. Uh, whenever you're using the comparisons for this exercise and for visual phasing in general, uh, you don't include those hard breaks from Genesis. It's not going to be to your benefit to do so. For other purposes, maybe for for you know determining validity of cousin distant cousin matches, it might be a great tool, but not for visual phasing. You don't want those. Um, don't forget to lower the DNA import threshold. Oh, the DNA painter import threshold. So when you, don't forget that when we imported uh, the segment data from GEDmatch, if we chose five centimorgans or three centimorgans, we don't want to kick ourselves in the feet by, uh, by having DNA painter eliminate anything below seven centimorgans. We want to make sure that matches. Um, so, and I mentioned before, I'm not going to go into it here, that's actually a really detailed process. There is an alternative workflow that would do exactly the same things theoretically that we're doing here um, using the Phoenix and Dark Side tools. And uh, we're not going to go over that in this video. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go over to DNA Painter. Sign in. Okay, so I got a lot of my own personal kits up there, personal profiles up there. But here we go with the ones that start with names like Civ1 and Civ, the more generic ones here. So I'm going to, you see, I've already created all the Civ1, Civ3 comparisons and all of the Civ1, Civ2 comparisons. And I've done Civ2 and Civ3, but I haven't done Civ2 X Civ3 or Civ3 X Civ2. So let's do those. Uh, I'm going to do it by essentially cloning this one because we're just starting out. There's no actual data for it. Uh, visual phasing. This, these are just like a checklist, basically. It shows us where we need to do the, uh, to apply the visual phasing. So, or chromosome mapping, however you want to look at it. And that's the nice thing about working with phase data. It really, uh, it really condenses the whole process of visual phasing into just a simple uh, chromosome mapping exercise. That's one of the uh, advantages. Okay, so. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the profile. And I got rid of some spaces, by the way, if you notice from the last video between these names, uh, or like between the sieve and the number, just to be consistent, because I made that typo in the original script that I had to fix. And uh, if I'm really consistent, less opportunity for typos. Right. 
so that's it. I just changed the name and uh, oh, the legend. Since I need this because I'm not ever going to be exporting this, but just to make it correct, I'm going to be exporting. What I'm going to be exporting is the ancestors of the map, not the uh, not the checklist itself. But who knows? May need it for something someday. So let's label it correctly. So I might as well label it right. We're going to clone it one more time. Okay. Here's a copy of. Because these these names here, like the name of the profile, uh, that's going to affect what it saves as when we uh, when we uh, extract export the uh, the actual visual phasing data. So we want to make sure that's consistent to avoid typos or to avoid uh, crashing the script uh, because my script functionality, what it does is in order to run faster, it, it eliminates all user interaction. Uh, and that means you won't be able, when the script's running, you can't give it any data. You've got to send the parameters directly from the script uh, that you wrote or that, that you use. Uh, so if you have a typo in there also, it doesn't have any user interaction. When you make an error, it'll just say it crashed. So get a group. So typos in your scripts are annoying because they're hard to uh, debug in the current version of Borland Link. If I may do something with that in the future, uh, we'll see. Okay, so now I'll go back to my profiles. Let's count them. We got, for the SID ones, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we are ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're looking at here is um, the the pseudo siblings the each of the phased files that we created in part one have been uploaded to uh, Jedmatch Genesis in the donor's user account and she has given me the kit numbers which I've redacted here um, and you can see that's got the, the looks like the the symbol for processing but this is from a couple days ago when I made the last video uh, they I checked and these are done processing now so next step is to move on over to Jedmatch Genesis, and uh, we're going to run the segment search tool. And I've got that queued up here. These are the settings we're going to use, and I have, I'm going to put the kit number for each one in here separately and run a segment search. Um, and I've created a screenshot of this, and I've also attached it to that Trello board, so you can, don't have to memorize what I said here. You can take a look at the settings later. Um, what I changed from the default, I left it, you know, build 37, uh, number of, oh, I'm sorry, I changed this, 10,000. We want to use as many, we want as much data as possible, um, because we're already might be working with a slim amount of data in some cases, so we don't want to miss any of the important data we have from our cousin matches. So we're going to consider the closest 10,000 uh, matching kits. Uh, we want to do five centimorgans, which is the lowest possible, and that's perfectly fine for phasing. Uh, and if you see one that doesn't make sense, you know, don't have to pay attention to every single data point you have in here. In fact, once we export these to, to Excel, you can filter uh, as you please, but you might as well include all the data in your Excel spreadsheet that's available on JetMatch. You can always filter it later if there's some, you know, if, if, if you don't like it. And you want to turn off, you want to keep it at scan all chromosomes, but you want to uh, turn off the uh, graphic bar for the chromosome because it just makes it much harder to copy and paste into Excel the results here. Um, so I'm not going to show you the kit number, but I'm going to do this and then I'm going to uh, uh, show you what how it looks like when it's processing in just a second. Okay, so I've redacted the output here so you can see what kind of output it is. Um, first of all, while it's generating, it takes a, it takes a minute or two to run depending on how many matching kits there are. Uh, we set the bar at 10,000. There were actually 7,669 kits that this uh, phase kit matched. And uh, each of those asterisks, asterisks underneath uh, between the, uh, the number of matching kits and the actual display itself of the, of the uh, results uh, is, was sort of the progress bar. Uh, each one, I think, was uh, 100 or, or 10 maybe uh, uh, matches, and you sit and wait for those things to come up. And then what you get is a chart that looks like what you see below. And I've redacted the email addresses and the uh, beginning of the kit numbers, but I just want you to see 
what kind of data there is. And something important here from this screenshot, um, these pseudo sibling kits are not real people. You want to make them as research kits. However, for the five or 10 minutes it takes you to make these, because uh, you can do them all at once even. Um, I don't know if that's a good idea, if it may, may slow things down, but however you do it, um, for the few minutes that it takes to actually run the segment report, make them public, and then change them back to private. Um, the reason is, is because you want the other pseudo siblings to appear on this report. Um, you don't want to also, you don't want to clog up other people's uh, GED match lists with uh, uh, matches that don't represent actual people um, because they're not interested in seeing that on their lists. So you make them private, but just for a few minutes while you run this report, make them public and then switch them back. Uh, and then you will have a, you know, they will appear on the, uh, on the matching segment reports of each other. Uh, which is important uh, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing where these siblings match each other, and we're going to use that to determine the coordinates uh, where where uh, where matches to each grandparent begin and end. So those where uh, those positions, assuming that they don't go over uh, a do not touch area, because we'll we'll ignore those spots. Um, if a pseudo sibling matches another pseudo sibling, it's because um, the, that block was inherited from the same grandparent. Okay, and you'll notice also, I just want to point out, we did sibling one and sibling two. Of course, uh, we see some matches there with the other pseudo-siblings, with two of them. We're not going to see a match with uh, sibling one x sibling two, and we're not going to see a match with um, sibling two x sibling one here. Why not? Because those are on the opposite, you know, copies of the chromosomes, and we would not see matches to that on any segment unless, you know, the parents were related or something. But what we will see is that uh, um, they match other of the pseudo siblings. So what I do next is I import all this into a tab on a spreadsheet. So my resulting spreadsheet is going to have nine tabs, one for each pseudo sibling, that's going to contain all this data. And I am going to hide some of the columns in that so I don't have to react, so we can actually take a really closer look at the, the data that's returned and talk about what we're going to do with it. Okay, so this is an example of my of a spreadsheet that I would make. And you can see as you, uh, you know, I have all the different tabs at the bottom for each of the pseudo siblings. And we're looking at one of them here, and I've hidden columns A and I, so you can't see the emails and kit numbers, but uh, you can see the names they chose for, for jet match, and you can see the points where they begin and stop and centimorgans, which is really all you need for this. Um, and now I don't want you to freak out because I said you won't see sib2 and sib1. Uh, if we were looking at, or sib2 x sib1, if we're looking at sib1 x sib2, uh, and sib2, unless, you know, parents are related, I got to qualify that. No, this is for donors, parents are not related, because I'm going to show you, look where this is, and this is why we don't touch uh, the ones that do not touch places. This is from 5.8 to 11.7 centimorgans on chromosome 1. Let's go to our DNA pointer, painter, and I wonder what this is. Do not, oh, wrong one but I'll bet you it's this one, 5.8 to 11.7. Don't touch. Um, if you paid attention to that data, to that match, that would give you bad data. Uh, you only use this process. You have to work around the do not touch areas. Uh, so I should have clarified that. I should have said that um, you won't expect to see any Sib1, X, Sib2, or Sib2, X, Sib1, and Sib1 on the uh, Sib1 and Sib2 list, except uh, in the do not touch areas, okay? So, and if you do see them in the do not touch areas, don't be alarmed. It doesn't mean your parents are related. It means your pseudo siblings are related in more than one way, and we knew that. That's why we're excluding those systems, uh, segments. Um, they should not match outside those areas is probably what I should have said. Um, okay, but now you understand why we don't touch the do not touch uh, area, because it will give us misleading data. We only visual phase around those. And now you understand why it's important that I set the threshold to three centimorgans, um, because we want to make sure we don't get any of those uh, of the do not touch. We don't accidentally phase o visual phase over any of those do not touch regions because it will screw up our analysis. That's why we're being extra precautious and including segments like this little one down here that's probably uh, around the three centimorgan range, just in case, because uh, it's better to have a little bit of less coverage in our results. We might get it from duplicity or from redundance from all these pseudo siblings anyway, 
than it is to get a little bad data in there uh, and end up uh, creating a reconstruction that uh, does not behave the way we want it to. Okay, let's dive into step three. Um, this is the visual phasing data that I received from the donor, uh, or one of three parts of it, because she's done it for each of the three siblings. Um, and let's take a little legend. I, I made the legend generic uh, that way uh, for her privacy reasons, and but so that you can still see what's going on here. Um, so she has it divided. Each uh, I put a line between the paternal and maternal side on, on the, the, the legend here. On the paternal side, she's figured out on some chromosomes um, whether that corresponds to a paternal grandfather or a paternal grandmother. And on other ones, she's been able to, um, by block, determine where the recombination events occurred, uh, but doesn't know which of her paternal grandparents the, the each block might or each segment might correspond to. And that's fine for this process. Um, and you can, as the nice thing about the script uh, recorder is that you, as you adjust your maps um, and you rerun my tools to uh, to extract the to to reconstruct the uh, grandparents and parents. You just download a new copy of your uh, phase map from DNA Painter into your data library, and it will use the updated version, and it'll totally update the outputs, and you can erase the old ones and you know replace them with the new ones uh, as you uh, get more and more data to you know, refine and improve your uh, your visual phasing. Um, but this looks like uh, um, just l looking over it. I mean, I'm not double checking the work because this is obviously a long time. It took a long time to do this, um, uh, especially since, from what she's told me, the limited number of known cousin matches. So this is really an excellent job, uh, and we're going to use this uh, to to start filling in the charts that we've already created. Uh, let's take a look at those for a minute. Okay, and so let's go to the first one, SIB1 and SIB2. And let's take a, a long one, for example, uh, a long stretch. Here's a nice long stretch. It's got an FIR in it, but, uh, but the part that we're going to look at is on chromosome 4 from uh, 75.6 to where this FIR starts. Ah, hard to get to it. There we go. To 159.2. Um, so 75.6 to 159.2 on 4. So now let's go to look at sibling 1. And this is her version of sibling 1. We'll go down to chromosome 4. And in the area that we were talking about, we have paternal grandparent 2 and maternal grandparent 2. So uh, paternal 2 and maternal 2. Now this was 1 and 2, so let's see which one of those two they have in common. Uh, going back to profiles, let's look at her sibling 2. Go for. Well, it should be obvious from just looking at it, it's going to be the maternal grandparent, too, because uh, sibling 1 and sibling 2 do not share paternal grandparent 1. They are only HIR, and they share paternal grandparent 2. And I don't know which build she used, but it doesn't matter because I think that's uh, the, the, the scale that we're talking about. It's not really going to matter as long as you don't mix, mix and match within a diagram. So let's go back to... Sib1 and Sib2. And let's take a look at chromosome 4 in more detail. Okay, I'm going to copy the segment. And this is this, watch this because this is not very clear. Um, there's not a cut or a snip or a, uh, a, a snap to feature in DNA Painter yet, although I urge, uh, I, I, I recommend that for this particular process. It would be very helpful to me. Um, okay, edit segment. Create a copy and confirm copy. So what I've done here is I've created you know another one just like this segment, and but I don't want it to be just like that segment. I want to if I had a snap to tool, I'd have it break right there when I was uh, when I was copying it. 
you know, or, or rather I could just slide the end of this and it'll automatically stop it exactly here. That's the kind of tool that I would find very helpful for this particular exercise. Um, okay, but I know I'm gonna go in, it starts at 159.2 and let me just copy it into my clipboard because I don't feel like typing all those numbers. And let's make our new copy end at 159.2. And instead of the group ancestor being um, SID1 and 2 pseudo sibling, which is sort of a checklist uh, for us, um, we're going, to, you know, it's not do not touch, we're going to create a new group. And that's going to be, I'm going to double check that it's been a few seconds, I'm going to double check uh, to make sure I got this right, but I'm going to call it maternal DP. And I believe when uh, when she made the designation of G maternal GP2 versus maternal GP1, it's done at a chromosome level, so that you know maternal GP2 on chromosome four may not be the same person as maternal GP2 on chromosome ten, say. Um, but that's okay for this because, uh, well, when we ex when we extract it, we just have to keep that in mind. That's all. Um, and I'm colorblind, and I don't like this color. I, I like the really bright colors for anything but the checklists. Uh, because then I can actually see them a little bit. Okay, so and there we go. Um, and then what I would typically do, since I do use these as a checklist, right? Because I can check on, I can click on this and see, well, ooh, I still have all these left to do, and I can say, oh, here's a nice big one. I want to work on this one, and I click on it. You know. Um, so what I like to do is I know this one ends now at 170, right? So I'm going to copy that into my clipboard. And the original one here, I'm going to start it at 170. I guess that was the copied segment, but it doesn't matter which is which, they're both the same. Um, so now my checklist, you know, of things to do, if we look on chromosome 4, which is what I'm treating that as, uh, has shrunk, you know, all that big thing isn't there anymore. But now you see also what I mean by working around the FIR region. We're just going to totally ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist and do not map anything over it. And when we condense this again, there you go, right? So now we just got to repeat this on every chromosome of all nine uh, of all nine pseudo siblings. So now on that same, we know that sibling two. X sibling one over that same span, right, is going to be the opposite one. It's going to be paternal grandparent one. Uh, so, but we know that that's over that same spot, um, the sibling two X sibling one is going to be PGP one. Now we go to sibling two X sibling one, chromosome four. Yeah, it's going to be the same segment, so it's the same thing. We're going to copy it, copy, confirm, copy, uh, paste that, save, and then I'm going to take that and only go this far. Oops. Another thing you might like to do is, uh, if you've imported this from somebody that kept track of the centimorgans, uh, you can clear them because they're no longer going to be accurate, but you don't have to. Um, I do, usually, if I remember. Uh, and this, so we said, was going to create a new group, and the new group name is going to be uh, Paternal Grandparent. And we're going to make sure that we name these groups consistently across the profiles. And I'll quality check that when I'm done in case I you know, have a space where I didn't in one or the other. Uh, and let's make this a color that I can actually see. Um, that's going to be it. And again, I'm going to copy and paste end of the FIR into my clipboard. I mean, I'm going to paste it. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it in the beginning of this one to clip off my checklist segment. And that's why I call it a checklist segment. And, you know, so we've done two. And, you know, then we can go into, and I'm, I'm going to do the rest of this off camera because I'm a little faster when I'm not trying to talk while I work. Um, but we could go into 
sibling one x sibling two right that's what we're gonna that's what we didn't do yet so what we'd want to go do is take a second look at sibling one and we know that on that block we want uh, pgp2 right so then we would put that and sibling one x sibling two we're going to paint you know this one here the first part of this segment as as that grandparent and so on and so on and so on and i might do some of this in batch in excel and, <laughs> and cheat a little bit and not do it on dna painter um but i'm going to put it all up to dna painter when i'm done some some of these processes are a little easier to do in batch you can do uh, are good with uh, functions and things like that in Excel. And, but typically, um, uh, if you were going to do this on your own, like let's say this was my family and this is a newly explored set of three siblings and no one had done the visual staging for me, typically it takes me about three hours per profile. So if there are nine pseudo siblings, that could be 27 hours worth of work. You know? So if you're working on this, like <laughs> uh, maybe two hours a day it might take you take you a couple weeks to uh to complete the visual phasing on it but that's not too bad i mean that's that's really the entire uh, the bulk of the work because the rest of it can be done in, in my tools in just a few minutes the hard work is the visual phasing and unfortunately for me um in this demonstration uh, she's already done most of that and i'm pretty much just going to go with what she has and uh we can work on fixing or or adding to that later uh, but let's get this script up so that everybody can start using uh, my tools for the three sibling scenario, and then we can refine from there. Um, okay, so I'm going to fast forward. The next time you hear my voice, it will be oh, many hours later after I'm done uh, after I'm done assigning phase to all these. Okay, so I'm done with my 13-hour uh, DNA painter session. I successfully, in those 13 hours, painted 198 chromosomes onto my uh, pseudo-siblings, my nine pseudo-siblings, and I also uploaded them to Trillo. I uploaded actually a link so that you can click on it, you can interact with it, uh, you can see all nine of those profiles and inspect what I've done, uh, compare it to the screenshots of the data I was given, whatever you'd like to do. And uh, what I want to do next is I'm going to download each of those profiles and I'm going to move them into my data library uh, because uh, also one thing I, I noticed a couple people were trying to upload DNA painter exports into the uh, resource manager. Uh, I don't think it'll crash if you do that. There's just no reason to do that. Whenever the uh, my program calls for a uh, DNA painter resource, it'll it'll ask for it specifically and make you find it on the computer anyway, even if you've gone through the trouble to upload it to your resource manager. I mean, maybe. For organizational purposes, if you want to keep it in there so that you, you know, save when you save your list, you know what you have or what you need for the project, but th there's no reason to actually do that as far as functionality of the program. Okay, so let's get to downloading. All right, so first let's take a look at what these profiles look like. Um, in groups of three, they're going to have the same segments. The colors are going to change uh, because the they're going to come from different ancestors. So the next group of three is going to have same segments but different colors and then the third group of three um, so if you look at the legend uh, I divide it into three parts uh, DNA painter is nice and lets you put a line between them to help organize a little bit and it made mapping uh, a little a little less painless uh, as painless as 13 hours of mapping chromosomes can be anyway so uh, the bottom do not touch uh, that's all the FIR segments, and they're still there, and I didn't paint under them. If you look at, for example, just any of these, like chromosome 5, I painted around them, not under them. Uh, so I'm not going to be exporting any data there. All of the stuff that I assigned to ancestors is in the HIR segments only. Okay, and then I used the pseudo-sibling, the original pseudo-sibling, as I painted it, you know, I changed the ancestor name. The only ones that are left are the ones that I was not able to assign phase to. Um, and I was going off of the chart, mostly going off of the chart that I was given by the donor. Um, and she'd really done a pretty complete job. Uh, okay. And then I split it up into paternal and maternal. 
and some she was unable to do by grandparent, but she was able to uh, decide whether it was paternal or maternal uh, particular segments. So for say so for paternal, I have four four legend entries: paternal grandpa, paternal grandma segments, and then two paternal uh, everything else sort of unresolved. And uh, paternal GP one is not a person. Paternal gr uh, grandparent two is not a person. Uh, they're both some combination, but uh, they're when in visual phasing in the, the three sibling case often people use uh, one and two on each chromosome so as as placekeepers so for further further work and that's that's fine I I kept that information in here uh, so because I this is a work in progress and as more segments are resolved uh, we're going to record a script so it should be easy to make some changes so let's go to each each uh, each uh, profile here and download it. Settings, all segment data, CV, CSV file. The next one. Settings, all segment data, CSV file. Segment CSV. Five. Six. Seven. And nine. So when I download them on my computer, it ends up in my downloads folder. And here they are, all nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, of course. Ah, that's another project I was working on. This group, this part of the nine. So I'm going to highlight them all and just drag them into my data library. Okay. And in future versions of the program, I'm going to allow users to decide where they want to put their data library. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to that yet, but I will. Uh, version 2.1, let's get it fired up. And the first thing I want to do is start recording a script. So, okay. Let's start recording script data. We're going to call this uh, three siblings uh, post visual phasing. Okay, so now it's recording our actions. So, first thing I want to do is from uh, the last video, I want to uh, open up the resource list. Let's see if we can find it here. That would be Project Free Siblings, looks about right, and that was right before the uh, new year. Yes. Okay. So we only have remember because this is uh, this was run on on my computer with dummy data. So I don't have the actual data that we're applying these to, but that's not a problem. We're going to use the same strategy here again. Uh, we're just going to create a script that we could send a script that we could send over to the donor, and then she could run the real deal on her computer. So. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, go back to the main menu, and we're going to use the Extract Segments tool. So I have one phony pseudo-sibling hit in here, and that was Sib1 and Sib2. 
I'm going to choose that as I'm going to pretend that's the kit that I've mapped the ancestors on. So of course, the real kit is uh, somewhere in Australia. So I'm going to hit select, and that was Civ 1 and Civ 2. Now, for this, I used uh, build 37, and I'm going to find DNA export Civ 1 and Civ 2. Now it's going to show me all of the different things that I had entered in the legend there, and it's going to give me, ask me which one I would like to extract. So let's start with uh, how about paternal grandpa? And I purposely uh, labeled in in the legends for each of those nine pseudo siblings. Uh, it put in parentheticals. Sib one and Sib two contribution, or on other profiles it might say Sib three x Sib two contribution, because these are going to be the file names that it automatically saves them as uh, when it extracts the data. So I wanted unique file names. Uh, so let's go ahead and select, and now it's going to start extracting that data from the uh, from from my dummy kit using the map we created in DNA Painter. So this is not going to be useful data. However, when she goes back and runs the script on her computer, it's going to extract the real data. And what it does is it extracts a bunch of segments, and then it's got to do a mono merge and merge them together, technically. So that's what we're waiting for here. Uh, performing the calculations to merge all those segments into a new kit. Shouldn't take very long, though. See, it's already added some output to my library. Saw some motion over there. Okay. Paternal grandpa is, of course, a male. And we'll leave it at that. Continue. All right, it's successfully added to the active resource list. Let's double check. Uh, there it is, paternal grandpa, Sib 1 and Sib 2 contribution. Not much there, only 1% coverage. Uh, a lot of the information was um, not divided by grandparent, but only by parent. So I'm not too surprised, but that seems a little low based on what we painted. So let's go back and take a look at the actual profile and see what's going on there. That's Civ 1 and Civ 2. Close the settings here. Paternal Grandpa. Well, yeah, no, there really weren't that many uh, for Paternal Grandpa on that particular profile. Looks like, you know, paternal grandma had more. Um, so that's not too... Let's do paternal grandma just to make sure everything's working okay, although I do believe it is. Um, and we're just going to go the same process back to the main menu. And I'm going to extract segments. And going to our... Uh, the one dummy pseudo sibling kit that I made, SIP 1 and SIP 2, and build 37 coordinates. Okay, I'm going to select the same DNA painter file, SIP 1 and SIP 2. And let's try paternal grandma this time. Loading the resource. Executing the extract segment script and performing merge calculations again. Shouldn't take too long. And this is actually the last extraction we're going to do. Um, the rest we are going to do by uh, manipulating the script just like we did in the last episode. 
So rather than actually running through the motions on all these, uh, we're going to just program the uh, uh, create a script that'll do it on her computer. You don't really want to watch all these scroll bars on my computer when it's not really doing anything. Uh, but I did want to make sure that this comes out higher higher than one percent. Make sure it's working properly. Because we saw there was a lot more paternal grandma than paternal grandpa. Still not a ton, but uh, let's see. Paternal grandma is a female. Continue. Okay, so now let's go into the DNA resources. And yeah, paternal grandma has 2%. And remember, we're, uh, these are mono kits, so that's 2% of our whole genome. So that's actually 4% of, uh, of, of, of painted. And plus, remember, we didn't do the X. And my program counts the X chromosome as part of the percentage, too. So although it sounds like not that much, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not bad. And we're going to have like nine times each of those. Plus, we have all those uh, undesignated grandparents that we sorted paternally and maternally. Um, and actually, let us do one more of those. Let's do one of those, um, just so we've done one of each before we, uh, so we can make it easier to cut and paste when we do the script, when we edit the script. So let's go back to the main menu, and let's go extract one more time, selecting uh, our one and only pseudo sibling there. And build 37. Now the same sib1 and s sib2. And this time, how about we do uh, paternal grandparent one? Again, loading from the library. Forming the calculations. Getting there. Now there, this might take a little longer than the other ones because there are more segments. And even though this isn't the real data file, it's it's running through the motions as if it was. It doesn't know that this isn't the uh, the correct the real pseudo sibling file. There we go. Final steps. Save my resource to the library. Okay. And I don't know that uh, this is not a real person. We'll just call it female. I usually default to female uh, because um, it leaves room for two X chromosomes. Um, but I don't think it really matters here. We didn't do the X chromosome, but I think that's that's what I usually do. So no reason to uh, do otherwise today. Okay, so add it to the resource list. Manage DNA resources, and let's take a look. See, now that's got 3%. So when you add all, all those together, the paternal side, um, that's 3, 5, 6, 6% 6 uh, just, from, just from that. And let's assume uh, that paternal grandparent 2, the other unknown, would be another 3%. Then that's like 9%. So that's like 9% of the, uh, the pseudo-sibling's father we, we've mapped. And we got nine of them. And some of them are going to overlap, but that's, that's not bad. Okay.
Um, actually, we shouldn't expect much overlap. But let's go back to the main menu and let's take go back to the script writer. Uh, manage scripts. Let's stop the script for now. Select disabled. There it is. Three siblings post VP. Uh, let's view it. Let's see what it looks like. Quite simple. We didn't do too much. Um, okay, so it loaded the resource list. Then it extracted the segments three times, just like we wanted it to. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move these apart just so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So we want to do more than three extractions, right? We want to do uh, we want to do all of the grandparent data. So from each of the nine kits, including uh, the the unknown grandparents, the uh, ones that we just marked as paternal grandparent one and two, from all nine of those kits. So that's going to be a total of eight times nine seventy-two uh, extractions. Uh, it might take a long time to run, but it shouldn't take a long time to code here. Uh, let's uh, let's see. So what are we missing? We're missing one whole category, right? We're missing. We're missing the category that is. Two. Paternal grandparent two. Mm -hmm. Sib one and sib two contribute, and we're going to make that email. Okay. So we've got on the paternal side, we've got all four types now, right? Uh, but we also want the maternal side. So let's just copy all of this one more time. Control C, copy, and let's change paternal to maternal for the second four. So we've got extract. This is going to be uh, paternal grandpa, paternal grandma, paternal grandparent one, paternal grandparent two. Now we want paternal grandpa, paternal grandma, paternal mystery grandparent one, and paternal placekeeper grandpa, grandparent two. Okay, so now we've got eight, and we just got to do this nine times. Actually, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to get rid of the spaces because we'll just copy this whole chunk nine times. But I'll leave a space after this chunk of code here so that we can see where to start changing the names of the files and of the, uh, let's say, and the names of the uh, DNA kits that we're going to be extracting from. So we got one. Now let's copy it nine times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can't see it, but you can see the scroll bar moving. You know it copies and pasted it. Uh, paste is control V if you want uh, the keyboard shortcut. So there we go. So now what are we going to do? Uh, where it says sibling one and sibling two? Sibling one, X sibling two. Sibling one, X sibling two. Sibling one, X sibling two. X, X, X. 
three per line. So we're going to miss it. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, <laughs> actually I'm still on five, that was kind of wishful thinking, huh? lost track of my count, six, Six part one, six part two, six part three. Here we go. Seven part one, two, and three. And the last one here, because uh, remember there's nine legend, eight legend entries for each of the nine pseudo siblings. Okay, right. now let's do it one more time uh, because I want to show you what I'm doing here. I'm going to make this sit, oops, and this is where I made a typo last time. Uh, see any typos, please let me know. And don't worry, I'm not going to do this all 72 times. Let us get through this little chunk here. And then I'll do the rest off screen. That I think you get the idea. I'm sure you have already. Okay, that's the first one for each of those three. Tell you what, let's copy that, right? Paste. 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 Mm -hmm. Keyboard shortcuts for copy and paste are very useful. Control C and Control V. Uh, all right. And there was a third one on each line, right? And that is over here. It's the legend entry. So if there were any typos in my legendary, that would be a bad thing. I tried to be as careful as possible, and I think I was very consistent. And remember, these aren't just scripts that I'm sending to Australia. Um, these are strips, scripts that we can all use. Uh, I'm going to post them on the Trello board as well. I posted the one from last week. Okay, so you get the idea, right? And then what's the next one going to be? It's going to be, I mean, I, 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 in the order that I did them, it might be Sib1 and Sib3. And then you got to do it again for Sib1x, Sib3, Sib3x, Sib1, then Sib2 and Sib3, then Sib2x, Sib3, then Sib3x, Sib2. And I will spare you from doing that, and I will get back to you in a few minutes. Okay, so I've got everything now. I've done them all. Um, wasn't too painful but I spared you from watching me have to click it a million times, uh, to copy and paste a million times. Um, so we're gonna continue. And let's replace the existing script with the modified script. Okay, so we're done extracting. We've extracted all the data we need from all these files and we're finally on step five, which is to put everything together. I wanna come up with a grand, uh, grandpa and gra a paternal grandpa and paternal grandma maternal grandpa and maternal grandma that corresponds to each of the original siblings. Uh, and going back to recording a script, we're going to add on while we still have the script in its memory, and we're going to have to call it something else. Uh, 
project three siblings uh, merge. Okay, so um, let's do a go back to the main menu, manage DNA resources, and let's see this. I'm just going to pick two random files to merge here. In fact, I don't need to. Let's go. Let's go directly to the Humpty Dumpty tool. And the reason is I want to just get a some merge code into our script, and then we could edit what what it is that we actually want to merge. So I want to do a mono merge, and then I want to do a stereo, stereo merge, because we're going to do a, both, a little of both kinds of merges. So let's do the mono merge first. We're just going to pick any random two uh, mono kits. We're going to merge grandma and grandpa, uh, and that's fine. We'll load each one. And remember, the reason we're doing this is because they're going to make it easy easy for us to code uh, the the uh, merges that we want for this uh, for this script that we're going to send to Australia for the three siblings project. And I'm doing this now, so you really don't have to write this script. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to share this script with everyone, but I want to see how you I want you to see how I did it. Uh, that way, if you need to make some modifications to it, you, you know what you're modifying and why. Um, one thing you might want to modify, let's say if you're done with your uh, uh, visual phasing and you don't have any uh, checklist sort of paternal grandparent one, paternal grandparent two, maternal grandparent one. If you're all done, you might want to erase those lines from your script. Uh, well, you definitely would want to erase those lines from your script because it's not going to find those in the legend. Um, so modifications like that, changing the names. Uh, in future episodes, I'll show you how to add variables and things like that into a script so that you can uh, uh, you make scripts a little easier to share. Okay, so the name of this new, let's just call it uh, Mono Output. I'll call it so it's easy for me to erase later. Test Mono Output. Continue. Okay, now let's do a sample merge to stereo as well. Uh, we're gonna do option two. Remember, option three is something different. That is for emerging kids from the same donor, uh, like if you tested with 23andMe and Ancestry to make a combined kit. Okay, option two. Uh, let's merge those same two, but we'll do it to stereo this time so we can compare and see how they code differently when we actually run the script. That's a bit too long because we're only doing two files for each of these. If you start adding a bunch of files, then it takes a while. Okay, and let's call this test stereo output. Okay, now let's go back to our script manager and stop recording the script. Continue, let's view the script. Should have added two lines uh, to the bottom of the code. I did. Merge mono GUI and merge stereo GUI. Okay, so now we got to think about 
what it is we actually want to merge. Uh, we're going to save stereo for later. Um, that's going to be to create our parent kits. But to create the grandparent kits, we're going to want to merge mono. Um, so let's start with paternal grandpa. Okay. So we're going to make a paternal grandpa that corresponds to sibling one clade first. Okay, so we're going to erase the output file and we're going to call it paternal grandpa sib one clade. Okay, and the components of that are going to be paternal grandpa, and this is, you see how the components work here? They're just listed inside the brackets. Uh, and the last one outside the brackets is the name of the output file. So inside the brackets, we're going to put paternal grandpa. Uh, SIB1 and SIB2 contribution, because that's part of SIB1, right? Um, and let's, okay, then we got paternal grandpa, SIB1 x SIB2 contribution. And we got more, right? I'm going to put this in highlight, copy. Actually, let's see, this time we want the parentheses, uh, in the uh, apostrophe too, right? Okay, so we got one and two. We want everything with a one in it, right? Uh, because this is going to be sibling one's contribution. So we got one and two, one without two. Uh, then we're going to add one and three. And then one without three. And then we, that is we have paternal grandpa, sibling one clade. That's all of the pieces of, of paternal grandpa that we've identified in sibling one. So now copy and let's do sibling two. Uh, we're gonna create paternal grandpa, sibling two clade. And that's gonna be Sibling one and sibling two, right? Because that also has data from sibling two. Uh, sibling two and sibling three. And sibling two, x sibling three, right? Am I missing any? One, two. Yeah, I am. We got one and two. We got one X two. Let's go back to the top here. One and two. One X two. One and three. Should be one X three. That's what I'm missing here. So here we got Civ one and Civ two. Uh, we got Civ two, two and Civ three. Now we need Civ two x Civ three and Civ two Civ one. Civ two x Civ one. I know it's a little confusing. Even I got confused there for a second. Um, but those are the four that have two in them, right? Not the x two. Not not our anti. Not without uh, the opposite side. So we got Civ one and Civ two, Civ two and Civ three. Sib 2 x sib 3 and sib 2 x sib 1. I know this is a little confusing. Let's try sib 3. It'll go a little smoother, I hope. Sib 1 and sib 3. Sib 2 and sib 3. We still want that in there. Uh, sib 3 x sib 1 and sib 3 x sib 2. And that's going to be paternal grandpa sib 3 clade. Um, I hope you're understanding this. I know it's kind of complicated. Feel free to ask me questions. Uh, let's do now, um, that's paternal grandpa. 
let's do copy the entire thing and we're going to make maternal grant well actually let's we got all those together right now let's merge those together just to make one paternal grandpa and that's the last step for paternal grandpa right so we've got three individual ones that we're going to keep um and we're also going to create paternal grandpa and it's just plain old paternal grandpa we don't need any further information about that and what are we going to merge we're going to merge Paternal grandpa, sibling one clade, with paternal grandpa, sibling two clade, and paternal grandpa, sibling three clade. I have a fourth one. And that's one combined paternal grandpa. Uh, now let's do it with paternal grandma. And what do we need to do in here? Anything funny? Uh, no, we just need to change all the paws to ma's. Um, Five. So it's five in each of those rows. One, the four inputs and the one output, right? Two, three, four, five. One, two, Three, four, five, and then the last one it should just be the three inputs, right, for each of the three siblings. Grandma, 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 and make one mega paternal grandma. Um, now we would do the same thing for maternal grandpa and maternal grandma, but I will spare you from that. Um, and instead, I'm going to jump to the punchline. I'm going to I'm going to add to this script later, and I'll, you'll see some of the additions I make when I add it to Prillo. But let's just let's just show you what I'm going to do with the merge stereo, right? Uh, so let's take as our first input, paternal grandpa. And this is arranged the same way, everything in the brackets input. Anything in this, you know, first brackets input, that list, and the last entry is the output. As you can see, I call it test stereo output. So paternal grandpa, paternal grandma, when we merge them together, what do you think we're going to get? Right? Now, it's going to be missing a lot of sections because um, because of all those paternal grand, grandparent one, grandparent two, and whatever, and I'm going to add those in. Uh, I may do a version of the script with and without, and I may also do a version of the script that is both sessions combined. We're essentially done though. Uh, what we're gonna do is once I complete this script, I'm gonna send it to the donor in Australia and she's just gonna run it. And uh, I, I, I will upload to the board what the statistics are as far as coverage goes, uh, because we, we'll see how much of her, we've had a conversation I know in the Borland Genetics Users Group about what type of coverage this process will, will, uh, will yield to say a, a parent uh, using three siblings. And I've actually gone ahead and derived that, and we're working on uh, deriving the uh, four parent, uh, four sibling solution, uh, or a general solution. So until next time, um, and, at the, and the next episode is going to be probably about something completely different, but I will 
post perhaps just a follow-up video uh, just to show the results when we're all done and uh, see what the output looks like. But that's the whole process. That's the nine pseudo sibling method. Um, any questions? I understand it's extremely complicated. Uh, just let me know. But what we would do next, you know, is just basically, and once I add a couple more lines to the script, you know, duplicate, do all the duplication, just let it run on the other computer and it's gonna spit out grandpa, you know, grandma kits and mom and dad kits that she could just upload to uh, Jedmatch and she will. All right, until next time.